You guys asked, and now I'm gonna answer. You can get all of my Notion notes. I'm releasing them all completely for free. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Amon. I'm a student studying computer science, and in this video, I'm going to break down my current 2023 Notion framework. You guys seem to really like my last video, so here's an update on how my Notion system has changed over the last two years. What is Notion? Notion is a productivity app that provides an all-in-one workspace where you can plan, write, take notes, add tasks, manage projects, and also create your own databases. It's sort of a hybrid between a traditional note-taking app and a database management system. It's your one-stop shop for storing all information and personally I think it's the ultimate note-taking app. Now since my last Notion video I've completed three full-time software engineering internships. I basically took an entire year off just to work as a software engineer and my Notion system has adjusted to fit that. I also completed my final semester of university where I took difficult computer science classes like operating systems and artificial intelligence using Notion the whole time. With that let's begin. So in my last Notion video, I talked about how for every class, I would write questions for myself using the toggle button and active recall them over time, changing colors for the questions I got wrong so I would know which ones to review. Since then, the system has really changed. Here's the thing. I realized that realistically, I'm never going to have time to keep on going through my questions and practice them every couple days. It's never gonna happen, especially when you already have homework, projects, assignments, exams. Another addition to that workload is just too much to handle. So nowadays, here's what I do differently. For class classes that give you note sheets or PowerPoint slides, I will just take handwritten iPad notes on those. I know, I know, sacrilegious. I'm not writing questions for myself, but this has been a way more time effective. Then after taking notes during class, I will use these notes to help me with the homework that I have to do anyway. Recently, I found that the homeworks are usually enough practice. Like I don't need to do the homework and then also do active recall practice right after I learned a concept. The purpose of the given homework is that it allows you to practice and shows you gaps in your knowledge. When I'm studying for the exam, if I do need more practice, I'll just go back and redo the homework or find problems in the textbook or especially look at past exams. Often the PowerPoint slides will also have practice questions that you can just work through for review. That's pretty much it. Here's an example of my AI slide. I've just been writing in important side notes while I'm watching the lecture. And then afterwards, when I'm reviewing for the exam, I'll go through these notes, do some practice problems, and either use YouTube or ChatGPT to explain concepts that I don't understand. Bro, honestly, in the past, I'd be making prospective, retrospective revision timetables, all these systems, and I'm just realizing that it's not that necessary. The given homework, practice exam, exams and textbooks should give you more than enough questions to active recall on. Now I still do write questions for myself in Notion for about half of my classes using the toggle feature, but that's because I personally enjoy the Q&A style of note taking. It's not because I'm going to spend time going through every single one of these questions multiple times. Now the classes that I do do that for are very theory heavy, like operating systems. There's a ton to memorize there and it's a lot less pure math than AI. When it's very theory heavy like that, I will use the toggle system for taking notes. And I'll go through those questions a couple days before the exam just to quiz myself, but I don't religiously go through them using some sort of timetable like I used to. I'm still a firm believer in the Feynman technique where in your notes, you pretend like you're explaining the concept to someone else. So I will do that when I'm writing my answers. It really highlights whether you do or don't understand something. And the Notion toggle feature is excellent for that. Recently, I've discovered that the less admin, the less overhead you put into the process of studying, the more studying you'll actually do. Yes, a productivity system is useful, but what you don't want to happen is for the system to completely take over everything and you end up spending more time building the system than studying the content itself. Since my last video, another technique I've added to my productivity arsenal is studying with friends. Now, I know, I know, it might seem obvious, but it makes a massive difference. This is the only reason that I got an A in operating systems, because I figured out an efficient system for studying with groups, which helped me fully understand the content. This is really, really useful when preparing for exams. First of all, you need to make some friends in your classes. I'm probably going to make a video on this in the future, but quick crash course. In the first few weeks, you need to turn to people around you and start a conversation with them. You can do this by asking them logistical questions like, oh, Oh, have you done the homework yet? Or have you started the project? And once you've started a basic conversation, you could end with asking them for their number. I found making group chats for courses very helpful. Now, half the time, the group chat doesn't really go anywhere. But the fact that I have like 30 people from a class in one place means that I can schedule study sessions for myself and just let the people in the group know that I'm going to be there at a certain time. And inevitably, at least a couple people show up. My technique is I'll use the app GroupMe to create a group, and then I'll send the join link in the Piazza. This is my operating systems group chat. Now, there's like 40 people here, 
99% of these people have not shown up to any study sessions. But early on, a few people did, and those are the people I studied with for the entire semester. And that's how I beat 80 to 90% of the class on almost every exam. I literally only sent a few messages in the beginning of the semester inviting people to come study with me, and that was all I needed to do. You just need to build that initial group, and then you can go from there. Okay, so here's my system for studying with friends once you make some. Now, this is where the Q&A style of notes really come in handy. I will project my screen onto the TV or projector and then open up Notion. Then I'll linearly go through question by question during my notes, and then everybody will try to answer them, and afterwards look at the answer and make sure that we got it right. The point of your Notion notes is now that they serve for a map of the entire course, and thus can help guide your studying when you're reviewing everything. Let's open up my operating systems notes. These notes cover the entire course every single lecture. Going through all of these topics and questions, you can efficiently review everything you learned during the last few months. Now, one thing I still believe in is active recall, and this is a form of that. You're not just reading through your notes, you can selectively hide questions and answers so you can quiz yourself. Other than using my notes, I will scroll through the PowerPoint slides and find questions that we can work on together. Sometimes the course has quizzes on Canvas that we can use as well. And if I still can't find any questions to study from the textbook, practice exams, or my notes, my friends and I will just start to quiz each other off the top of our heads. Inevitably, different people understand different things to a certain level, so whoever understands the topic the best will try to quiz the other people on that subject. That way you guys are merging together your knowledge to create one super brain of information. Now, if we ever find something that nobody in the group understands, this is a pretty modern update, we'll use AI tools like ChatGPT to break it down in simple terms. We'll go through the textbook, the notes, and paste concepts into ChatGPT, asking it to explain it in simple terms. I found that writing explain this to me like a 12-year-old into ChatGPT has been really helpful because then ChatGPT dumbs it down for you. That was bloody brilliant! If you do this for everything you learn throughout the semester, you'll have a really good understanding by the time the exam comes. That's how my study system have changed for Notion, this is how I use Notion for software engineering. Over the past year, I did three software engineering internships and used Notion the entire time. Two were at Shopify and one was at Amazon. Now, I can't show you guys the confidential specs from some of those internships, but I can break down the theory behind my notes during that time. The biggest use I had for Notion during my internships was how I used it to take notes on the code base and write down common questions I had, effectively building up my own personal documentation. Something you'll find out when you do an internship or you join a new company is that every company has tens of thousands of lines of a unique code in their code base that you have to understand as fast as possible after you join. And it's different for every company. And companies often have notoriously bad documentation, which makes it even harder. And because of this, I've developed a system for building your own knowledge map of the code base in Notion. Here's what I did. For every internship, I'd create a new page in Notion for the company. In that page, I'd nest several pages for every project I was working on or every heading in the the code base. For each project, I have a section at the beginning which answer questions on topics like, what is the goal of the project or feature you're building? What are the important deadlines you have to worry about? Who do these changes actually impact? And who are some people you should reach out to if you have any questions about specific topics? And I'd also have a section below that where I'd break down a full to-do list of exactly what I had to implement to create the feature. Usually I create this to-do list while my manager is breaking down exactly what I have to do for the project. Finally, at the bottom, I would have space for questions that I can note down and get clarification from people later on. This system was extraordinarily helpful, and my manager at Amazon actually mentioned to me how great my personal documentation was. Other than tracking projects, I'd have entire pages for breaking down sections of the code base. In the beginning of my internships, I would allocate entire afternoons to doing code base deep dives. I'd see myself as a scuba diver, jumping into oceans of code, and diligently detailing how everything works. VS Code was super helpful because I could easily click around through functions and variables and figure out how everything was working. This meant I had a pretty strong understanding understanding of how everything worked pretty quickly. Another thing I used Notion for was writing down frequently asked questions. One of the most annoying things to a manager or a teammate is when a newbie keeps asking the same question over and over and over again. It screams incompetence. People don't mind if you ask thoughtful questions for the first time, but if you continuously badger them, it just doesn't look good. I learned that while working at Amazon. I figured out that I needed to take screenshots, write myself notes, and over time build up that personal documentation so I wasn't constantly bothering my teammate. Another thing I would use Notion for is keeping track of my accomplishments and progress over time. One big mistake I made earlier last year was not keeping track of what I was doing on a regular basis. These companies usually have two to three performance reviews every term, and they use those to dish out return offers, promotions, and salary bumps. So you want to make sure that you have a gold amount of your achievements that you can pull from that you can use during your review so you can bag that return offer. I messed this up during my first Shopify internship. There would be times where a manager would ask me what I had done in the last 
last month. And honestly, I wouldn't have that much to say. I had been working the whole time, but I just didn't have great notes to detail exactly what I was doing. In my second Shopify internship, I got really good at this and was able to flesh out exactly what I was working on almost every single day. I was able to fill my performance reviews with all my tangible accomplishments, and that was because of Notion. If your manager or someone else asks you what you've been up to over the past few weeks, it's really helpful to have this engineering journal where you can immediately go to to get a summary of your progress. Ideally, at the end of every day, you jot down a few points answering the following questions. One, what did you work on today? Two, what did you achieve? Three, what are you planning to work on tomorrow based on your progress? from today. You guys asked, so I'm going to answer. Here's how you can get all of my Notion notes completely for free. These are all of my Notion notes from every single computer science class I took during university. There's a link in the description that'll bring you right there. If you're interested in how I use Notion to conquer coding interviews, you can watch this video right here. Thank you guys for watching. A like would be incredible, and I will see you in the next video.